presented by the Air Products Foundation. The foundation is supported by donations from Air Products and Chemicals Incorporated as a charitable organization whose contributions provide support for educational, cultural, health, and community programs in the Lehigh Valley. Funding is also provided by Lehigh Valley Bank. Lehigh Valley Bank provides student loan plans for undergraduates, graduate students, and parents of students, as well as a full line of regular banking services. Our name says it all. The series is also made possible by Channel 39 School Services participating districts. WLVT-TV presents Scholastic Scrimmage, a weekly program featuring teams from Lehigh Valley High Schools in a contest of quick recall. In this evening's championship contest, the teams are from Southern Lehigh High School and Lewis E. Duroff High School. Your host for Scholastic Scrimmage is Harry Price. Good evening and welcome to Scholastic Scrimmage. We're going to meet the teams, then the coaches, and then we'll begin the contest for this evening. From Duroff High School, Thomas Hendershet, who is a junior. Karen Chang, a senior. Timothy Smith is the captain. He is a senior. James Zabo, a senior. I would like to recognize Jim Zabo for being a commended scholar in the National Merit Scholarship Program and Karen Chang for being designated as a finalist. The coaches for Deer of High School are Jean Ham, teacher of the learning disabled, and Dee McDermott, coordinator of alternative education. <laughs> From Seven Lehigh High School, Jeff Strom, a senior, captain, Gaff Elias, a senior, Janessa Kepler, a senior, George Nagy, a junior. Again, I would like to recognize the National Merit Scholarship uh, designees, and we have Janessa Kepler is commended, Jeff Strom is a finalist, and Scaff Elias has already been designated as a National Merit Scholar. Our two coaches for Southern Lehigh are Ann Thomas, teacher of social studies, and Joe Holinsky, teacher of chemistry. Channel 39 is pleased to announce that at the conclusion of this evening's program, this championship program, the Air Products Foundation will present a $1,500 scholarship award to the championship high school and a $750 award to the runner-up high school. Remember, the answers to the questions on scholastic scrimmage require rapid recall of factual information and aren't necessarily indicative of academic training. The rules for the contest are as follows. On toss-up questions, you'll be given 10 points for each correct answer, and 10 points will be deducted for each incorrect response. If you answer incorrectly, then the opposing team will have an opportunity to answer without penalty, and they will receive five points for a correct answer in this situation. Of course, a correct answer to a toss-up question gives you the opportunity to answer a bonus question without penalty. Team members may confer only on the bonus questions, and the answers to these questions, the bonus questions, should be given to me by the two team captains. A buzzer will signal the end of the contest. If it sounds while a question is being asked, the game stops. The buzzer goes off while you're answering. However, you will be permitted to complete your answer, and no bonus questions will be asked. If we're ready, we'll begin the contest with a first toss-up. We're preparing for a 10-point bonus. Brazil produces the most coffee. For 10 points, what country produces the most tea? Southern Lehigh, Scaff. China. Incorrect. Over to Dira. Timothy. India. India. India produces in excess of a billion pounds of tea per year, well ahead of China's 725 million. Here's your bonus. Got five points on the rebound, Tim. You give me the answer. It's a ten-pointer. Former Senator John Tower chaired the commission appointed by President Reagan to investigate the Iran-Contra armed scandal and to make recommendations concerning the National Security Council. For five points each, name the other two members of the Tower Commission. Tim? Muskie and Scowcroft. I'll accept that. Edmund S. Muskie and Brent Scowcroft, or Scowcroft, is correct. Going for a ten-pointer. Toss-up. Give me in correct sequence the exact three-word Latin phrase that appears in commencement programs and it means with highest suddenly I scaff. Summa cum laude. You are correct. With highest praise, summa cum laude, higher than magna cum laude, or cum laude. Here's your bonus, a ten-pointer scab. You give me the answers. I'm going to name two irregular verbs, irregular verbs. For each of them, please give me the past tense and the past participle. You'll receive five points for each correct pair. Here are the verbs. 
The first one, swear, S-W-E-A-R. And the second is creep, C-R-E-E-P. Okay, past tense of swear. Swore. Past participle. Had sworn. Past tense of creep. Crept. And past participle. Had crept. Okay, you are correct on all four counts. You have your ten points. Toss up, looking at again at a ten point uh, bonus. For ten points, name the hormone that's secreted in the pancreas and that controls Southern Lehi scaff. Insulin. Insulin's correct. It controls the metabolism of glucose. Bonus 10-pointer scaff, and you might want to use paper and pencil on it. Here we go. Three of the phyla within the animal kingdom are the arthropods, the chordates, and the echinoderms. For five points each, identify to which of those phyla, arthropods, chordates, and echinoderms, the following creatures belong. First, lobsters. Scaff. Arthropods. Correct. Toads. Chordates. Scaff. Chordates. Correct. You've got your 10. This is going to be on the monitor. It's in mathematics. What's the area of the right triangle formed of the coordinate axes and the line defined by 3x plus 2y is equal to 6? <coughs> the buzzer's gone off. There's no response. It would be three square units. Three square units. Another toss-up. Who was president when the Missouri Compromise was passed in 1820? Dear Timothy. Um, Monroe. Correct. James Monroe. Bonus 10-pointer. I'll give you a date and a clue. And for five points apiece, you name the event. First one, 1431, an execution. Ten? Of Joan of Arc. Uh, more specific, please. Uh, the burning at the stake of Joan of Arc. You are correct. Joan of Arc was burned at the stake in Rouen, France. 622, a religious event. Um. Timothy. Uh, no response. No response. Muhammad fled Mecca, the Hajira, it is known as. He fled Mecca for Medina. One out of the two for five points. Again, we're looking at a 10-point bonus to toss up. For 10 points, give me the one-word name applied to the 1700s when philosophers emphasized the Southern Lehigh scaff. Age of Reason? Incorrect. I'm going to go over to Deeriff. It's a toss up, and Tim's buzzer light is on. If we could remove that. I can answer that. You can answer I that. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I didn't realize you were trying to answer Enlightenment? That. Enlightenment is the correct answer. Give me the one word name applied to the 1700s when philosophers emphasized the use of reason as a means to free people from ignorance and provide a perfect society. And this is key. The word begins with the letter E. Bonus 10 pointer for you and the team, Timothy. I'll name the characters, and for five points apiece, you name the play by William Shakespeare. First one, Bottom, B O T T O M. Timothy? A Midsummer's Night Dream. I'll accept that. A Midsummer Night's Dream. <laughs> Second one. Viola and Malvolio. No, it isn't. Timothy? Two Gentlemen of Verona. That would be Twelfth Night. Twelfth Night. One out of the two for five points. Again, a toss-up. One form of communication in animal societies involves the secretion of pheromones, which are chemicals that can be detected by their odor. You can earn 10 points by spelling pheromone. Suddenly, I scaff. P H E R O M O N E S. We'll accept that. I didn't want you to correct yourself once you began, and you did not. That was the end of that particular question. Here's your bonus a 10 pointer scaff. Name the French astronomer the French astronomer who catalogued star clusters and nebulae. Scaff? What place? No, it would be Charles Messier. In fact, uh, his tome was called the uh, Messier Catalog. Here's your visual. It's going to be on the monitor again in mathematics. I want you to express that expression for 
to the x power divided by 8 to the y power as a power of 2. <coughs> Suddenly, hi, Jeff. 2 to the 2x minus 3y. You are correct. 2 to the 2x minus 3y power bonus. 10-pointer. Again, you might want to use paper and pencil for this one. I want you to listen carefully. It's a mathematical bonus question. And here it is. A farmer's silo consists of a circular cylinder three yards in radius and 20 yards high, plus a hemispherical cap, also three yards in radius. For five points each, I want you to find the following. First, the volume in cubic yards of the cylindrical portion. Scaff? 180 pi cubic yards. You are correct. The volume in cubic yards of the hemispherical cap. <laughs> Scaff? 18 pi. Correct, Scaff. You've got your 10 points. Toss up, looking again at a 10 point bonus. John Hancock presided at the Congress that produced the Declaration of Independence. For 10 points, who was the president of the. Dear Timothy. George Washington. You are correct. It is the correct answer. I was going to say, who is the president of the convention that framed the Constitution? And that answer would have been George Washington. You gave a correct answer. Here's your bonus, 10-pointer. As set forth in Article 5 of the U.S. Constitution, one of the methods for proposing changes to the Constitution is by a national convention that Congress would call at the request of state legislatures. For five points each, tell me first, what fraction of state legislatures must request such a convention? Two-thirds. Tim? Two-thirds. Correct. In, if such a convention were held, what fraction of states would later have to approve any changes proposed by the National Convention in order that they be ratified? Tim? Two-thirds. No, that would be three-fourths. One out of two for five, on, uh, five points on that bonus. Toss-up. The subject of this particular question had a great impact upon the environmental movement in the United States. For 10 points, I want you to name the author of the influential nonfiction, Southern Lehi George. Carson. I'll accept that. And I'm sorry, I can't accept. I'll have to read it again. Name the author of the influential nonfiction books entitled The Sea Around Us and Silent Spring. First and last names, please. Karen? Rachel Carson. You are correct. It was my mistake uh, in accepting Carson originally because we were looking for both first and last. Here's your bonus, a 10-pointer. You got five in the rebound, Tim. During 1985, two different autobiographies each sold more than a million copies. I want you to name the authors. Tim. Uh, Lee Iacocca and Chuck Yeager. You're correct on both counts. Iacocca's was Iacocca and autobiography, and Jaeger's was Jaeger, an autobiography. You're correct. Toss up, looking uh, at a 10-point bonus. Name the only common constituent of the terrestrial atmosphere whose molecular structure includes a triple bond. S suddenly, I scat. Ozone. Incorrect. <coughs> and there's no response from Dira. Name the only common constituent of the terrestrial atmosphere whose molecular structure includes a triple bond. It's diatomic nitrogen, molecular nitrogen. Toss up. In October 1986, a C-123 transport plane was shot down in Nicaragua, and its surviving crew member was captured by Sandinista soldiers. Suddenly, I scat. Hasenfuss. You are correct. Name that American mercenary, Eugene Hasenfuss. Your bonus gaff, a 10-pointer. Upon retirement of Chief Justice Warren Burger, President Reagan named Associate Justice William Rehnquist to succeed Burger. During his 12 years in the White House, President Reagan has also named two new justices to the Supreme Court. During his years in the White House, President Reagan has also named two new justices to the Supreme Court. For five points each, I want you to identify them. Scaff? O'Connor and Scalia. Correct. Sandra Day O'Connor in 1981 and Antonin Scalia of Virginia in 1986. You're correct. Toss up. Multiple choice. For 10 points and from the following, does the adjective opulent, O-P-U-L-E-N-T, mean 
ambitious, exhausted, wealthy, or Southern Lehigh Janessa. Wealthy. Wealthy, rich, affluent, the Danes. Bonus 10 pointer. A long running TV game show gave you the answers and you had to come up with the questions. And I want to play a round of Jeopardy. Remember, you must express your answer in the form of a question. First one Desdemona. Scaff. Who is Othello's wife? You are correct. Well, what was the name of Othello's wife? Sturgeon's Row, R O E. What is caviar? caviar? I'll accept that. What is caviar? What is caviar prepared from? It's row is the eggs of, in that case, the sturgeon. Going for a 10 point bonus toss up. It's going to be in art. Beyond the monitor. You may re remember seeing a reproduction of the work on your monitor previously on television. The seated saint has a hospital in Boston named for him. For 10 points, I want you to name the saint. Southern Lehigh, Janessa. Allegius. You are correct. Saint Allegius. And I think the TV show is what? Saint Elsewhere? Bonus. 10 pointer. I'll name five 20th century musical personalities, two of whom perform or did perform as operatic soloists. For five points each, identify the two opera singers among these names. Samuel Barber, Andre Watts, Robert Merrill, Cheryl Milnes, and Andre Previn. Scaff. Previn and Milnes. Incorrect. I'll give you five points. Incorrect on the first. Uh, Samuel Barber was an American composer. Watts is a pianist. And Andre Previn is uh, also uh, an American composer. Uh, so those three are out. The two which are or who are opera singers would be Robert Merrill, a baritone, and Cheryl Milnes. So we will give you Milnes, who was also a baritone. Going for a 10-point bonus toss-up. What's the adjective of Latin origin that's used to describe a legislature consisting of two houses? Southern Lehigh Scaff. Bicameral. Correct. Ten point bonus scaff. Five points apiece for two questions about the Nile River. For five points, at what Sudanese city do the Blue Nile and the White Nile meet? Scaff. Khartoum. Correct. In what neighboring country does the Blue Nile rise? Scaff? Ethiopia. Correct. And that count two, you have your ten. Going for another ten-pointer toss-up. For ten points, name the Midwestern lawyer and writer who uncovered the lives of small-town citizens in a collection of free verse epitaphs. Southern Lehigh, George. Edgar Lee Masters. You're correct. Uh, in uh, a work he called Spoon River Anthology. Masters. Ten-point bonus, Scaff. Five points apiece again. I want you to pay attention on this one. Each of these answers must start with uh, the letter A and end with the letters T-I-O-N, like attention. Here's your first one. A fancy word for betterment is what? Scaff? Ambition. No. Amelioration. Here's your second one. Prolonged tribulation or suffering is what? Mm. No response, Gaff. Uh, you just missed the buzzer. It would be affliction. Affliction. Another toss-up that's a visual toss-up in mathematics. In the set of complex numbers, what's the value of that expression? Southern Lehigh, Jeff. Zero. You are correct, Jeff. And your bonus, a ten-pointer. Here's a mathematical bonus question. I want you to listen carefully and consider two unknown positive integers. The average of the two integers is ten. The difference between the two integers is three times the smaller integer. For five points each, I want you to find the two integers. Just missed it, Scaff. Four 
and 16. Again, the average is 10. The difference between the two integers is three times the smallest. Another toss-up. I want you to name the river which flows more than 1,500 miles south and southeast from the Himalayas to the Bay of Bengal. Suddenly, I scaff. Ganges. Correct. Ten-point bonus. In the U.S. government, the National Security Advisor serves as the director of the National Security Council. There are only four other members of that group. For five points each, give me the titles of three of the other four officials who are members of the National Security Council. Remember, I need their titles only, not their names. Staff? Head of the CIA, Secretary of State, and Head of the Defense Intelligence Agency. Uh, incorrect. Uh, I'm going to give you five points to the Secretary of State, SCAF. Uh, the four members are the President of the United States, uh, the Vice President, the Secretary of Defense, and the Secretary of State. Here's your toss-up. I'm going to give you ten seconds for this question. Uh, we usually do that only on mathematics or mathematics, physics types of questions. Uh, for ten points, what is the last verb, this is a toss-up, what is the last verb in Lincoln's Gettysburg Address? Suddenly, I, George. Among? Incorrect. Over to Dira. It's a toss-up. Tom. Parish? Parish is correct. And that government of the people, by the people, for the people shall not perish from the earth. Here's your bonus. You got five on the rebound, Tim. Ten pointer. For five points each, identify these phrases, uh, each containing the word king. First phrase, proper speech or correct grammar. King's English. Tim. King's English. Correct. A Kipling story made into a movie starring Michael Caine and Sean Maybe Connery. Yeah. Tim. The man who would be king. And you're correct again. You've got your ten. Again, looking at a ten-point bonus. Toss-up. There are two major classes of seed-producing plants. One class consists of the gymnosperms, most of which are coniferous trees. The flowering plants constitute the other class. What is its scientific... Suddenly I scaff. Angiosperms. Correct. What is its scientific name? And here's your bonus, a ten-pointer. And again, you might want to use paper and pencil. I'm going to give you a list. I want you to arrange the following five bones the vertebrae in order from the head downward. That would be sacral, cervical, coccyx, lumbar, and thoracic. Cervical, thoracic, lumbar, sacral, coccyx. No, lumbar, second last. And we're sacral. I'm sorry, Scaff. I'll give the order. From the head downward, it would be cervical, thoracic, lumbar, sacral, or sacral. Coccyx would be the final. Here's your uh, math toss-up again, a visual on the monitor. If y, if y is equal to 1 divided by x plus t, then what is the quantity y minus t squared equal to? Suddenly, hi, Jeff. 1 divided by x squared? You are correct. Bonus, 10-pointer. I want you to listen carefully again. Again, we have to listen carefully on these mathematics questions. It's a mathematics bonus question. College student has three pairs of socks. Two identical brown socks and four identical blue socks. He stores them in a drawer as, uh, as a heap of six unmatched individual socks. For five points each, if he picks out two socks at random, find the probability first that he gets two brown socks. Scaff? One-ninth. Incorrect. It would be one-fifteenth. One out of fifteen. Second one. What is the probability that he gets two blue socks? Scaff? Um... Twelve-thirtieths? No. I won't accept that. Uh, certainly not as reduced. It's two out of five. Two-fifths. Two-fifths. We're going on for another uh, toss-up looking at a ten-point bonus. Alexander Graham Bell, Andrew Carnegie, and John Muir 
We're famous. Southern Lehigh Scott. Yeah, Scotland. We'll accept. We're famous foreign board Americans. What was the country of their nationality? And you are correct. Scotland. Bonus 10 points. The U.S. Senate has three major powers that neither the House of Representatives nor any other body has. One of these three is the power to sit as a court of impeachment. For five points each, name the other two major exclusive powers of the United States Senate. Treaties. Treaties. And I have to approve the appointment of and let's go slowly on this. Give me the first. And they must approve treaties? Ratify treaties? We'll accept that. And they must um, approve appointments to the uh, Supreme Court? Is that specific enough for the judges? They will confirmation of presidential appointments to major federal offices, including the Supreme Court. The judges will accept. You're going to get your 10 points on the bonus. We're now going to take a halftime break with the score at half, 170 for Southern Lehigh and 85 for Deer High School. <laughs> During our halftime breaks of the championship contest over the years, we have asked, are participating schools to designate a, a narrator of a videotape. And we're going to begin this evening with Southern Lehigh and George Nagy will narrate the videotape describing Southern Lehigh High School. Southern Lehigh High School, which opened in 1955, is located about eight miles south of Allentown at the southern end of Lehigh County. The high school serves the communities of Coopersburg, Limeport, and Center Valley, as well as Upper Saucon and Lower Milford Townships. The school is populated by about 900 students who attend grades 9 through 12 and are taught by the 60 members of the instructional staff, which is headed by our principal, Mr. George Hooper. These students and teachers are involved every day in a wide variety of curricular and extracurricular activities. The curriculum at Southern Lehigh is designed to allow students flexibility in preparing for their post-high school endeavors. The students may choose from offerings in areas as diverse as geometry and gourmet foods, or metalworking and mass media. Extracurricular activities span a wide range of areas, including sports, academics, music, drama, journalism, and service organizations. Southern Lehigh offers a full spectrum of options in athletics. This year, Southern Lehigh teams distinguish themselves with championship performances in boys tennis, golf, and varsity softball. Intramural sports, such as bowling and archery, are also offered during various times of the year. In music, the Soul Lehigh Meister Singers provide quality choral music for the Southern Lehigh community. This year saw the Southern Lehigh production of the Broadway musical Fiddler on the Roof under the direction of Mr. Benjamin Evans. The Elites, our school's jazz stage band, competes at stage band festivals and has been recognized for its outstanding performances. The Spotlight is the name of our school newspaper and it provides entertaining and informative reading for our student body. In 1987, Southern Lehigh placed many firsts throughout the Lehigh Valley in Pennsylvania. Southern Lehigh's chess team rose to victory within the East Penn Jersey League. So Lehigh also won medals at the State Science Olympiad competition in Harrisburg. At the Biology Olympics at Cedars Crest College, our team took first place in the Biology Bowl competition. Artists at Southern Lehigh also won honors at such various Lehigh Valley competitions as the Objects 5 exhibit and the Kemmerer Museum competition. Southern Lehigh High School has several outstanding service organizations which serve our local community. The Student Council sponsored a charity marathon dance and Toys for Tots drive, as well as hosting the District Conference for District 10 of the Pennsylvania Association of Student Councils. The Southern Lehigh Key Club finished its second year of existence with activities such as food drives, bake sales, and car washes with the purpose of raising money for charitable causes. At Southern Lehigh, the Spartan spirit is always present whether at work or play. Students work hard at doing their best, whatever their field may be. They realize that learning is the key to success in life. No matter where they go after high school, Southern Lehigh will have prepared them for that success. Thanks, George. Very well done. We'll now go over to Deerhoff High School, and the captain, Timothy Smith, will narrate their videotape. Lewis E. Deerhoff High School was established in 1959 and was credited in 1985 as being a model school by the National School Recognition Program. It offers a multitude of courses preparing 1,400 9th, 
through 12th grade students for postgraduate endeavors such as college, business life, and industrial occupations. In addition, the school also provides students with a general education. Those who are enrolled in trade or technical courses do laboratory work at Deerf and at the Lehigh County Area Vocational Technical School. Modern facilities and a spacious campus provide a unique hands-on environment for students, whether it be in an earth sciences class, an electronic music class, or a home economics class. In the Deerf Planetarium, students from the area schools have an opportunity to learn about the wonders of the universe and surroundings unique to the Lehigh Valley. The education provided at Deerf gives talented students the chance to express themselves on the stage or on the canvas. Those who take art courses work surrounded by works of world-renowned artists such as Henry Batoya, Klaus Seinfeld, and Clarence Carter. At the end of the year, students have the opportunity to display their best pieces alongside the masters at Deerf's annual art show. Deerf received the presidential citation for meeting the needs of all students. Remedial programs, special education classes, and an ESO all program gifted honors advanced placement classes, and Air Force Junior ROTC are offered at all four grade levels. Husky pride is prevalent in Deerf sports as well. Boys and girls participate in 13 different interscholastic sports. This year's teams won several district and conference titles, including the East Penn League Basketball Championship and the District 11 Baseball Championship. The competition is equally fierce within the phys ed classes as well. The climax of Deerf's sports season arrives in November when the school is decorated for Husky Pride Week, culminated by the annual football game between Deerf and Allen High School. Other extracurricular activities we must mention include our band, which recently won awards in Orlando, Florida for their fine performance. Of course, there is the school's distinguished and nationally known newspaper, The Leader, recognized by the Columbia University School of Journalism as one of the top ten newspapers in the country, and also the recipient of the George H. Galf Quill and Scroll Award. In order for us students to keep such high standards in our classes, we need study halls. We can study in our library, or socialize in cafeteria study halls. At 3 o'clock, students leave Deerf High School with the enlightenment from our faculty and our principal, Michael Meilinger. At graduation, they leave Deerf High School ready to face the rest of life's challenges. Uh, we would also like to add special thanks to Carl Cope, a Deer High School graduate who compiled this script and slideshow for us. Thank you, Timothy, and uh, thanks to Deer High School and to Southern Lehigh High School. Again, we're going into the second part of our uh, championship contest with the score 170 for Southern Lehigh and 85 for Deer High School. Here's your first, a toss-up, going for a 10-point bonus. What's the criterion for belonging to Mensa, M-E-N-S, Southern Lehigh, Janessa? You must have an IQ of at least 150. Judges, they will not accept. Over to Dira. I did not complete the question. What is the cr criterion for belonging to Mensa, M-E-N-S-A? Jim? You must have an IQ of 130. No, I'm not going to accept that either. I think you were both being very specific and probably too specific. It's an international organization, of course, of people of very high intelligence, and uh, I think their their designation is scores on a standard intelligence test higher than that of 80, 98 percent of the population. We're really looking for high score on intelligence test. Here's your toss-up. It's a physics uh, toss-up question. A jet plane is climbing at a 30 degree angle through calm air. For 10 points, if the jet speed is 250 meters per second, what rate is its elevation increasing? Southern Lehigh, Jeff. 25 meters per second. You are correct. Here's your bonus, a 10-pointer. The development of quantum mechanics during the first 30 years of the 20th century was the work of many scientists, but several individuals made pivotal contributions. I'm going to describe two of those scientists for five points each and name them. First one. In 1900, this German physicist introduced the idea of a quantum of energy in order to account for the spectrum of light given off by incandescent objects. Scaff? Planck. Correct. Max Planck. In 1900,
1913, this Danish physicist proposed a new theory of the electronic structure of atoms. Scaff? Four. Niels Bohr is also correct. Going for a 10-point bonus toss-up. You might want to use paper and pencil. Do listen carefully. A restaurant's menu lists four soups, three entrees, and five desserts. Okay, I'll go over that. Four soups, three entrees, five desserts. If you order one item from each category, suddenly I scaff. Sixty. Correct. How many different complete meals can you order? Scaff is correct. With his answer of 60, we're going to another mathematical bonus question. Again, listen carefully. It'll be on the monitor. The equation y is equal to one-fourth times x squared. y is equal to one-fourth x squared defines a parabola. Consider the line segment that joins the origin to the point on the parabola which has x equal to 2. For five points each, find first the length of that line segment. Scaff. Square root of 2. Incorrect. Square root of 5. Second part. The slope of the line segment. Scaff. One fourth. No, it's one half. It would be one half. Go on to another toss-up. Multiple choice toss-up. The Battle of Actium was fought in the first century B.C. For ten points and from the following, when did the Battle of Masada take place? Was it 10th century B.C., 5th century B.C., 1st century A.D., or suddenly I scab? 1st century A.D. 1st century A.D. You are correct. That's where the Jewish zealots made a last stand against the Romans in 72, 73, and about that A.D., so it would be 1st century. Ten-point bonus, multiple choice scab for you and the team. From the following, multiple choice, what king fortified the fortress of Masada before the birth of Christ? Was it Agrippa, Herod the Great, Nero, or Claudius? Scaff. Herod. Herod is correct. Herod the Great. Toss-up. For ten points, what name is given to the systematic statistical study of human populations, particularly births, marriages, mortality, suddenly high George? Eugenics. Incorrect. Dear, it's a toss-up. Tim? Ethnography? Not ethnography. Demography we were looking for. Demography or demographics. <coughs> toss-up. It's a listening toss-up. Listen to the excerpt. We've just heard a segment uh, from Sir Edward Alger's March number five. Dear Timothy. Pomp and circumstance? You're correct. It's March number five uh, for orchestra. I wanted you to name its more commonly known title or give its more commonly known title. It is Pomp and Circumstance, and some of you, at least six of you, will be hearing that in a week or so. Here's your bonus, a 15-pointer. It's a bonus question on chamber music, Timothy. Ironically, a standard woodwind quintet includes a French horn, which is technically a brass instrument. For five points each, name three of the four other four instruments generally included in a woodwind quintet. Timothy. Flute, clarinet, and oboe? Correct. And bassoon we would have accepted as the fourth. You've got your points. Toss-up, going for a ten-pointer. I'll give you ten points if you can give me the seven-letter adjective, seven-letter adjective, starting with the letter A, which means of or inhabiting ocean depths to which sunlight does not suddenly I scaff. Abyssal. Correct. Sunlight does not penetrate. Bonus ten pointer scaff. It's a physics bonus question on the topic of mechanics. Again, you better use your paper and pencils. I want you to consider an object whose mass is twenty six kilograms. Two forces directed at right angles to one another act on the object. The magnitudes of the two applied forces are 5 newtons and 12 newtons. For five points each, find the following. First, the magnitude of the net force in newtons. Scaff? 13 newtons. Correct. The magnitude of the resulting acceleration of the object in meters per second squared. Scaff? 0.5. You are correct. You've got your 10 points. 
Toss up, mathematics. What is the sum of the interior angles of a polygon having seven sides? Suddenly, I, Jeff. 900 degrees. 900 degrees is correct. I can barely hear you, Jeff. Speak up just a bit. Here's your bonus, a 10-pointer. Monitor, multiple choice. Which of those triples that you see there, they're triples of numbers, could not be the measures of the sides of a triangle? It's 4 root 3, 7 root 3, 10 root 3 in the first group, 8, 9, and 10 in the second, 1 and 1 half, 1 and 3 fourths, 2 and a half in the third, and square root of 5, two square root of five, and three square root of five in the fourth. Scaff? D. D. The last one is correct. The sum of two sides would equal the third side, and that's an impossibility. Going for a ten-point bonus, toss-up. Maze Prison, M-A-Z-E Prison, is the highest security prison in Europe. In what country is it located? It would be Northern Ireland. It's in Northern Ireland, near Belfast. Toss-up. The plural of most words is fairly easy to form, but some words are tricky. For ten points, what is the plural of Mr., M-I-S-T-E-R? Dear Tim. Messers. You are correct. And it's spelled M-E-S-S-I-E-U-R-S, -S -E really, which is French. Here's your bonus. Ten-pointer, Tim. We few, we happy few. For ten points, Shakespeare wrote this to describe the English warriors of what battle? Timothy. Battle of Orleans? No, it would be Agincourt. Agincourt, the site of the English victory over the French in 1415. Going for a ten-point bonus. Here's your toss-up. By the way, I think that was from Henry V. Going for a ten-point bonus. Toss-up. With the continuing development of high-speed computers, it's become very common to represent or imitate a particular situation, operation, or system by a computer. For ten points, what's the standard term for such an imitation? Suddenly, I, George. Simulation. Correct, George. Here's your bonus, a ten-pointer. Again, it's a physics bonus question. You guys seem to be getting a lot of those. Again, listen carefully. Consider two resistors, each with a resistance of 48 ohms and a 12-volt automobile battery. For five points each, find the total current in amperes supplied by the battery in each of the following cases, and I'll give you two cases. First, the resistors are arranged in series and connected across the battery. Scaff. One-eighth amp. Correct. The second, the resistors are arranged in parallel and connected across the battery. Scaff. One half. Correct. You've got it. Ten points. Going for another ten-point bonus. Toss-up. If in right triangle ABC, angle C is the right angle, I'll write it down. Right triangle ABC, angle C is the right angle. The tangent of A is equal to 12 divided by 5. What is the value of the sine of A? Southern Lehigh, scaf. Uh, 13 divided by, or 5. I'm sorry. I'll have to stop you there. We're going to go over to Deerif. It's a toss-up. Jim? Uh, 5 divided by 13. That would be 12 divided by 13. 12 divided by 13. I didn't think you could get there, scaf, uh, starting out with 13 and then 5. Here's uh, another toss-up. What's the nominal longitude of the international date line? Suddenly, I scaff. 180 degrees. Correct. Here's your bonus, a 10-pointer scaff. Alexander Haig is a retired U.S. Army general and current or potential presidential candidate. But he's also held civilian positions of high authority in two Republican administrations. For five points each, name the high position Haig held in first Richard Nixon's administration. Scaff? Secretary of State. Incorrect. How about Ronald Reagan's administration? Secretary of State. Secretary of State. That I will accept. I didn't want to give you the... It's Chief of Staff of the White House under Nixon, Secretary of State under Reagan. You've got five points. Going for a ten-point bonus. Toss up. Give me the seven-letter literary term for a break or pause in a line of poetry that contributes to the rhythm of the poem. 
Suddenly I scared. Uh, Cicera? I'll accept that. Cesura. It's spelled C-A-E-S-U-R-A. -E Here's your bonus, a ten-pointer scat. Your spelling ability can really pay off on this one, Scaff. And team, for five points each, no correcting yourself once you begin. I want you to spell two words. First word, Aborigine, one of the original native inhabitants of the country. A-B-O-R-I-G-I-N-E. Scaff? A-B-O-R-I-G-I-N-E. Correct. Inoculate, to inject an immunizing serum into. Inoculate. Scaff? I-N-N-O-C. Incorrect. I'll stop you now. It's only one N. I-N-O-C-U-L-A-T-E. You got one out of the two for ten points. Going for a ten-pointer. Toss up. On what continent is the Atacama, A-T-A-C-A-M-A, -A -A, desert located? Suddenly, hi, Janessa. Africa. Incorrect. Over to Dear Oaks. Toss up. Tom. Asia. No, it's not Asia. It's in South America. It's an arid region in northern Chile. Atacama Desert. Toss up. For ten points, name the 13th century Christian philosopher who summarized scholastic philosophy in a work called Summa Theologica. Dear Oaks. Timothy. Aquinas. St. Thomas Aquinas is correct. Ten-point bonus, Timothy. And again, you might want to use paper and pencil, Tim and team, for the question. It's uh, ten points for matching the following books with their authors. Here are the books. The Age of Anxiety, The Age of Reason, and The Age of Innocence. The authors, W.H. Auden, Edith Wharton, and Thomas Paine. I'll, I'll go with The Age of Anxiety. Arden. The Age of Reason. Pain. The Age of Innocence. Wharton. Correct. You've got your f 10 points. 15 points on that, I'm sorry. Judges corrected me. I'll recorrect it. It is a 10-point bonus. Going for another 10-pointer. Here's your toss-up. The energy source which powers most of the energy-consuming reactions in a living cell is adenosine triphosphate. For 10 points, what's the three-letter short... Southern Lehigh Scaff. ATP. Correct. It's a short name the biochemists used to refer to adenosine triphosphate. I'm going to describe, Scaff, for you and the team, uh, structures of the human anatomy. For five points each, you identify them. The first one, these tubes connect the middle ears to the throat. Scaff. Eustachian tubes. Correct. Second, located just below the diaphragm, behind the stomach, this is the largest sympathetic ganglion in the autonomic nervous system. Scaff? Solar plexus. Correct again. You've got your 10. Going for another 10-pointer. Toss up. A solid figure consists of a triangular prism topped by a triangular pyramid. The base of the pyramid is congruent with and coincides with the upper face of the prism. For 10 points, how many edges does this composite solid possess? Dear Jim. Thirteen. Incorrect. Scaff. Twelve. Twelve is correct. You got five on the rebound. Here's your bonus on the monitor. I want you to simplify that expression. That's two to the T power times five to the T power divided by ten to the T minus one power. Scaff. Ten. Correct. Toss up. It's a literary toss up. I want you to listen to the phrase, which means to act in according to the dictates of one's own conscience. If a man does not keep pace with his companions, perhaps it's because he hears a different drummer. Let him step to the music he hears, however measured or far away. I want you to name the author of those lines. Dear of Tim. Henry David Thoreau. In Walden is correct. Bonus, ten-pointer, Tim. I'm going to read again. Some lines of a famous American poem. In fact, the first four lines. For five points each, give me the author and the exact title of the poem. I tear her tattered ensign down, long as it waved on high, and many an eye has danced to see that banner in the sky. Timothy. The author Longfellow? No. Hello? Oh, <laughs> there goes the title. I, I won't do that. Here, it's, uh, the author is Oliver Wendell Holmes, and the title of the poem is Old Ironsides. Actually saved the boat from being destroyed. Toss-up. 
What branch of learning takes its name from a Greek word meaning the love of wisdom? Europe, Tim. Philosophy? Correct. Bonus 10-pointer. In many cultures, status and inheritance are determined by how close you are to being the first-born male. What's this law or custom called? Tim? Primogeniture. Correct. Toss up. It's a little trivial. Not that. Name the Supreme Court Justice who in 1928 said... Southern Lehigh Scaff. Bruce Laurent. Incorrect. What's happening? Dear, over to you. Name the Supreme Court Justice who in 1928 said... The power to tax is not the power to destroy while the court sits. Tim? Hughes? No, it was Oliver Wendell Holmes. Uh, actually, Oliver Wendell Holmes Jr., the son of the previous man. Another toss-up. Finish this line from Shakespeare, a very famous line. I'm reading the question. The final buzzer is rung. The final score is 295 for Southern Lehigh and 160 for Deere. I'm going to turn the program over now to uh, Sheldon Siegel, the president and general manager of WLVT, for the presentation of the awards and trophies. Sheldon. Okay, thank you very much, Harry. This, of course, is our 12th season of Scholastic Scrimmage, and uh, we would first like to congratulate and meet the coaches of the Deerup High School team, Gene Hamm and Dean McDermott. You did a splendid job, and... Uh, as we indicated earlier on the show, the Deerup team was the very first team to win in Scholastic Scrimmage when the series began in 1975. We want to thank you both, and uh, we think that you may have some words for both your students as well as the people who are interested in how Deerup did this season. We're just very proud of them all. We thank you, them very much for their time that they've put in this year. They've done a wonderful job. Dean? Very much the same comment. <laughs> We really want to thank you all, and uh, on behalf of uh, Channel 39, we'd like to present the uh, the silver reel. You can put that with the gold one, uh, and uh, we hope to see you back soon again on the championship match. Thank you very much. Thank we you very much. To it. Now I'd like to welcome in the coaches of the championship team, Southern Lehigh, Ann Thomas, and Joe Halinski. Ann, it's a pleasure to have you. Joe, it's a pleasure to have you. Southern Lehigh, of course, the defending champions, so they, of course, have a gold reel. Uh, that will go with the one that they won last year. Joe, if you want to take that, and perhaps you would like to make some comments on behalf of your team. We certainly want to thank Channel 39 for this opportunity for our students to compete this way. They've done a great job, and we're very proud of them. We couldn't have done it without our parents. We have a full complement of parents sitting over there. We're really very grateful for them. Joe? Uh, I don't think we should forget our colleagues uh, who have written hundreds of questions for us, and they're in our file uh, from the last few years. And... Uh, so I'm very proud of the team, and uh, they're a group of characters, but they, they know their stuff. And we, of course, know that uh, repeating on scholastic scrimmage is as hard as it is in the NBA. This is only the second time uh, in our 13-year history that a team has come back to win two in a row, and you're to be congratulated. Thank you very much. And now I'd like to invite forward Pam Handwork, representing uh, the Air Products Foundation. Pam is Community Relations Philanthropy Manager for Air Products and Chemicals, and she is going to present the scholarship awards, $750 award to the runner-up school, Deerup, and $1,500 to the winning school. Uh, Dr. Willett Cluel, the uh, president of the Allentown School Board, will be here first to represent Deerup High School. Pam. Thank you, Shell. Thanks very much uh, to all of you for coming today. It's been a pleasure, uh, and on behalf of the Air Products Foundation, uh, it's a delight again to present these awards. I come here, uh, I've, I've done the presentations for several years, and I come generally with mixed emotions. First, I'm quite honored, certainly, to be here, but secondly, I'm generally a little embarrassed at the number of questions that I'm unable to answer. So it's a salute to the fine minds here. Dr. Cool, on behalf of the Air Products Foundation, please accept our uh, runner-up check for $750. Thank you very much. And you're not the only one who can't answer all those questions. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. And again, on behalf of the Year Products Foundation, to Mr. George Hooper, our check for $1,500. Congratulations to you and to the fine teams and other teams who have, con who have uh, competed in this contest. Thanks. Thank you very much, Pam. And now, uh, uh, Willard, if you would stay up here, we would like to invite forward uh, other representatives of the district. I'd like to have Mike Green, if he could come up first. Michael, uh, uh, we saw you here last year, just about a year ago, and I know that you're very proud of this fine Southern Lehigh team. 
we are very proud of them, and I'd like also to commend the Deerf team. I think they did a fine job. I'd like to point out that the Southern Lehigh team is supported very well by their student peers, by the coaches who've done a fine job with them, by the parents, and we just think that it's an, an outstanding thing that Channel 39 does, and we'd like to thank Air Products for supporting this. And if Pam was embarrassed, I was awed by the questions. No question about it. Thank you. Uh, Willard, if you would step in. Uh, Dear of High School, as we mentioned, won 12 years ago, and it's no easy accomplishment when you bear in mind that even to get to the finals, you've got to go through four very, very tough games, and your school did a wonderful job in getting to the championship finals today. Well, thank you. I've followed this classic this classic scrimmage the whole year through, and I was very, very glad to see the two teams here today, and I give my heartiest congratulations to Southern Lehigh and also to Deerup. Furthermore, I think it's wonderful that people like Air Products provide the money for this and also that uh, Channel 39 provides the airtime, and this is a great service to our community. Thank you both. We thank you, and our, our appreciation also goes to Dr. Richard Kahn, superintendent of schools in Allentown, who was unable to be with us, and Mike Meilinger, the uh, principal of Dare of High School. We would also like to express our thanks to the Air Products Foundation. They, of course, are charter underwriters of this series, and it's our pleasure this year to welcome the fine people at Lehigh Valley Bank right here in our own Lehigh Valley area as co-underwriters of the series. Our thanks go to Frank Tobias, Director of School Services for Channel 39, who has been the producer of this series for the past 12 years. And now it gives me pleasure to return the program back to that quiz master extraordinaire, Harry Price. Harry? Thanks a lot, Shell. Uh, while we're thanking people, we should pay special thanks to Richard Redd of the Lehigh University Art Department. Uh, Professor Redd has, has stood by us for many, many years, supplied our art questions and almost all of our slides, and thanks to Richard. I'd also like to thank David Eddy, a, a colleague of mine at the Hill School in Pottstown, for supplying many of the mathematics questions. Unfortunately, I could not answer a few myself. Uh, we're going to thank all of the students who participated throughout the year. It's, it's tough. It's very tough to get up here in front of a camera and have to answer extremely difficult questions. We all know that, and we appreciate your doing it. It's not only the two of you, but all, all students in the, I guess, 30 teams that we had this year. Certainly we thank the teachers and the parents also for participating. I'd also like to give a personal thanks to the staff of WLVT, uh, which has always been very supportive of this particular program and has done an outstanding job. We're going to thank you now for being with us. We're going to see you next year, hopefully in November as we begin another series in Scholastic Scrimmage. This is Harry Price. Thank you for being with us and good night. scrimmage is provided by the Air Products Foundation. The foundation is supported by donations from Air Products and Chemicals Incorporated as a charitable organization whose contributions provide support for educational, cultural, health, and community programs in the Lehigh Valley. Funding is also provided by Lehigh Valley Bank. Lehigh Valley Bank provides student loan plans for undergraduates, graduate students, and parents of students, as well as a full line of regular banking services. Our name says it all. The series is also made possible by Channel 39 School